In this video, we will start with trigonometric identities. You will find this on page 182 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. Trigonometric identities. Recall the term identity, where both sides represent the same expression written in different forms. We did it in chapter 1. This is the same for trigonometric identities. You will always find a left-hand side, LHS, and a right-hand side, RHS. Thus, a trigonometric identity is true only when you can prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side for any value of the variable. Using the unit circle, we can derive all the trigonometric identity. Okay, now this is actually very interesting and I'm going to make it bigger because everything comes from sin and cos. Oh, let's just move it a little. I want you to see it bigger. Okay. Now, a unit circle always have that radius is one. Okay, can you remember? Um, I think when we did with radians, we were also making the radius one. Okay, now, using the unit circle, we can drive all the trigonometric identities, as I said. So, sin theta, now, now don't forget, sin is opposite, because that's y, and that is x. Okay, now sin is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's y over 1, which is just y. So sin theta is y in the unit circle. Very important. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's x over 1. So x is... Um, then it cos theta will just become x. This is very important. Okay. Now, working with this too, I can now... That's the first identity that I get is tan theta. Because tan is now opposite over adjacent. But can you remember that y, in the place of y, I actually put now sin theta. And in the place of x, I put cos theta. So opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent will be equal to tan theta. So that's where tan comes from. And then cot is the reverse. Now I, I always have a method where I tell students to remember it like this. I know that tan is sin cos, uh, cot is sin cos, but which one is now on top? Now I remember like this. If it's cot that starts with a C, then cos that starts with a C is on top. Okay, doesn't matter how you remember it. Now, using Pythagoras' theorem, and we actually proved this already in a previous video, but in Pythagoras' theorem, this because this year 90, you say x squared plus y squared is 1. Now, x squared, that means cos theta, plus y squared, sin theta squared, cos theta squared, sin, and that's 1. And it's coming from there. So, divide by sin theta, uh, sin squared theta. So, if I divide all of them by sin squared, I get this. And I think I also proved this. And, okay, I'll show you now the rest. And divide by cos, so take the original one, and divide by cos squared x, cos squared x, cos squared x. Now, remember, okay, can I show you? I didn't show. So, sin over cos is going to be tan squared x plus 1 is equal, and remember if this, it's sec squared theta, where this was 1 plus cot squared x equals cosec squared. Okay, and that is where I... Just remember, and I'm just mentioning it now, you can work, this one is also having alternatives. You can say then sin squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. And you can say cos squared theta is, okay, then you make this the subject, 1 minus sin squared theta. Okay, so you can play around with different things. The same in this one. 
So know the original one, or at least know this one, know how to derive this two, and then be able to write the two options, which in this case, I'll just show you, one is equal to 06 squared theta minus cot squared theta, and then I can also say cot squared theta is equal to 06 squared theta minus 1. Okay, something like that. And the same in this case. Okay, maybe just four. And just say one is equal to six squared theta minus tan squared theta, and tan squared theta is equal to six squared theta minus one. Okay, all the options. So just out of this basic ones, I already derived this but we have names for the different ones and let's see in the next one again i'm going to make it nice and big so that you can see all the different ones let's remember it okay so remember you can manipulate the pythagorean square identity to have different subjects that's what i showed you in the previous video so if you this one can result into this too then i made a nice summary this one can result into this two. This one can result into this two. To help you to remember some of the trigonometric identities, a regular hexagon is drawn as shown. Okay, now this is very interesting. So it's also the first time that I was putting it in one of my books. I came across it in my research and I just thought, oh, this is nice and new. Okay. Okay, so, so let's start there. That is sin cos, and then there's cot, and then there's cosec, okay, I want to see, and there's sec, okay, can you see, there's tan, and opposite him is cot, there's sin, and opposite him is cosec, and there's cos, and opposite is sec, so you can remember, you can just remember this too, and then just write the opposite ones down, that's already a, a method of remembering it. So the trigonometric ratios of opposite ends of the same diagonal are reciprocals of each other, as I showed you now. If I go opposite, cot, then tan is 1 over cot. Sin <coughs> is 1 over cosec. And cos is 1 over sec. Okay. That's the reciprocal identity. Then the quotient identities... Just move it up. Now, let's just take that. Start at 10 and go clockwise. So, start at 10 and go clockwise. So, 10 is sin over cos. Okay. And cot is, and uh, now this you go anti clockwise, cos over sin. Okay. So, 10 is sin over cos, and cot is cos over sin. Okay, so that's how you can remember it. Let's go on. Now the product identity. Any trigonometric ratio is equal to the product of its two immediate neighbors. Okay, now let's see if we, we follow this sketch. So sin theta, sin theta, you can multiply it. Cos multiply tan will give you sin. Okay. okay. Can I just show you why? Can I just show you why? Because if you have cos theta over 1 and tan is sin theta over cos theta. So it cancels and then you have sin. You see, it makes sense. Okay. So tan is sin multiply sec. And sec is tan multiplied cosec. And cos, the two neighbors, sin multiplied cos, um, cot. And cot is cos multiplied cosec, always the two neighbors. And cosec was the neighbor, sec and cot. And you can, you can write it out and then you will see it simplify. Okay, so maybe that's a bit new to you. Now I come to the ones that we use quite a lot, and, and that's the Pythagorean identities. In each shaded part, the sum of the square 
again, the sum of the square of ratio or values at the adjacent vertices, okay, adjacent, one of which may be one, is equal to the square of the trigonometric ratios of the third vertex. I'm reading it again and I'm showing you. In each shaded part, there's the shaded part, the sum of the squares, okay, of ratios, okay, ratios at the adjacent vertices. Now, adjacent, if I must look what, what one, um, which one can be one. Okay, so sin squared plus cos squared theta, and that will be equal to one. Okay. And the trick now at the third vertex. So sin squared plus cos squared is one. Okay, let's look for this one. Tan squared plus one squared is six squared. Do you see that? And look at this colored one. One squared plus cot squared is equal to cosec. So the arrow shows you in what direction. So, and if you look, the arrows every time goes in the same direction. You can also travel anti-clockwise around the triangle and get one minus cos squared is equal to sin squared. Okay, where is this one? 6 squared minus 1 squared is equal to tan squared theta. And cos 6 squared minus cot squared theta is equal to 1. Okay. And that's that. So the most important that you must memorize, and then you can memorize, patterns is always better to memorize than just words. So just remember, so it was tan, sin, Cos, and then you just write the opposite. But start with tan there. Tan, sin. You can just memorize that free. And then you go, the reciprocal, the reciprocal, the reciprocal. And then you just memorize all of them. Okay, that's a way. Now we come to proving identities. And there's a few rules. And then I'm going to make it a bit bigger that you see better. So proving identities, you will be given two expressions with a modified equal, okay, so it's three stripes between them. These expressions are already equal to each other, but you are asked to prove that they are equal. That the end goal of any trigonometric identity proof is to make the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation look the same. Okay, so they must exactly like copy and paste. However, this must be done with extreme caution because only one side of the identity can be changed at a time. So, that, this is very important. That means, so we cannot use methods such as squaring, taking roots on, on both sides or cross multiplication. We can just work on a single side. We cannot move over the, e the, the inequality side. Due to the fact that we work with only one side at a time, we can only use techniques that we would use in simplifying expressions. So it's like an expression, and we just follow the rules of expression, say, on the left-hand side, and then we follow the rules of the expression on the right-hand side. It's, it's actually not an equation. It's two expressions that you must prove that they look exactly the same. Okay, they end up exactly the same. Now, we just have a few hints. Okay, this is very important. Terms or factors of each expression cannot be moved to the other side of the equal sign. That's what we said very top. Should squares occur, try to rewrite them using Pythagorean square identities. So if you see squares, try to go for the square identities. Express all the remaining functions in terms of sin and or cos using reciprocals or quotient identity. Okay, that is also very important. In terms of, it, sometimes it's the long road, but it's usually going to bring you to the answer. Now, try to simplify by means of factorizing, cancellation or addition of, of fractions, making it one fraction using the lowest common multiple. Sometimes it's necessary to multiply the expression, left-hand side or the right-hand side, by 1. An expression 
that will give the difference between two squares. Okay, so, so sometimes you will go and you will multiply. Say, for example, um, it was 1 minus cos theta. Say, for example. Then you will multiply with that so that you go into a difference between two squares. Okay, and that's what they mean. So you multiply with the opposite sign, the top and the bottom. Look out for expressions such as sin squared theta plus cos squared theta, which I know, 6 squared minus 10, this, this type, uh, this one, uh, this is the product. Look for this, because they are all equal to 1. Okay, and you can even go and memorize that, that you can remember that, that they are all equal to 1. Start to simplify the expression on the most complex side and simplify it so that it has the same form as the simplest side. You can also manipulate both sides until the final expression are the same on both sides. Most of the time she will just do one side and try to get it like the other side, but it can be that both is so complex that you have to simplify both sides and bring them to the same value or expression. Okay. At last, let's look at an example. Prove the identity. And what I did is I start very simple and then I went a little bit more complicated. So prove the identity, there's the identity, that this is equal to this. Now, because I see there's something that can be multiplied out, I think I will start with this left-hand side and I will multiply that out. Okay, so remember, I multiply, 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 and multiply. And then I see what is there that I can maybe add up. Okay, so that will become 2. Now I have sin squared x plus cos squared x, which I showed you there, and that becomes 1, and I end, end, some, and I end basically with the right-hand side. So therefore, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay. I want you to stop the video, and I want you... Make it a bit bigger, that you see better. Just want you to do number one. I'll try now 31, just that example. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Right, let's first write it down, always. And I was trying, because I know sometimes students struggle a lot with identities. So I was trying to do one and to give more or less exactly the same one to you. I hope it's not exactly the same one. Okay, let's just see. Um, I just want to go back and see what was the difference. So, oh, there was a positive. Do you see? And mine is a negative. And there was a positive. And mine's a negative there. Ah, it's almost the same. Okay, so we're going to start with the left-hand side. And I say, and I'm going to first rewrite that. Now square. Now if it's square, it means I must write it out two times. I can do the short way also. But I think in this case, let's rather stick to the long way. Okay, so I will get sin squared x minus sin x cos x minus, try to write it the same. If you start with sin, start with this one also with sin. Sin x, it's easier to see they are the same. Cos x um, plus cos squared x. Okay, so it's going to be sin squared x minus, this is exactly the same, 2 sin x cos x plus cos. Oh, and you don't have to put, make it so long. You can just see that that is 1. So that is 1 minus 2 sin x cos x. And therefore, left hand side equals right. And side. That's how you do it.